来，各就各位。哎，不同不同，不同啊，对，不同的。干干的，好的，又漂亮，收一次。Yes， go！ 哇，走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走And at every single day, we deliver about 30 to 35 babies. In fact, to date, I think KK has delivered more than 1.6 million babies. KK was uh, established in the year 1858, and it became a dedicated maternity hospital in 1924. It is also the only specialist hospital for maternal and child health in Singapore. In this delivery suite, we will typically see the labouring patients who are here to deliver their baby. However, we also see um, patients who are um, otherwise um, perhaps not ready for delivery, but uh, may be here for further monitoring. We will strap on a monitoring for baby's heartbeat trace and make sure her own vital signs are stable. One of the other important things that we provide for them is pain relief in labour. A few pain relief options, uh, namely the Antinox gas, the laughing gas, as well as the epidural for those in established labour. Okay, you feel some pushing, all right? Deep breath in, breathe. Very good. Excellent. You notice that a lot of our nurses are very, very nurturing. They would see a patient in pain and no part of them is not empathetic, but every part of them can be calm and provide that sense of security for the patient. It's quite wonderful to see a woman through her labour process. You come in one patient and you leave as two patients. Our medical conditions can be very dynamic and patients' condition can change very, very fast. And for obstetric conditions, one of our main concerns would be mothers who are immediately compromised or fetuses that are immediately compromised. So the close proximity to the operating theatre will help us to exercise immediate delivery in terms of a crash cesarean section. So when we activate our code green, our time to theatre can be as short as a few minutes. Did you like it, brother? Mm. Not good? Attention, all medical staff, code blue for neonatal in delivery suite, bed 28. The major number of babies that we have are here because they are born preterm. So these are babies who are typically born less than 37 weeks gestation. So these are mostly newborns who unfortunately have medical or surgical issues that require us to basically care for them. The smallest ones we take care of can be as early as you know, 23, 24 weeks. They can sometimes stay with us for up until three to four months. We are the first point of contact because once they are delivered, either the delivery suite or the OT, they come straight to us. So I think it's a very meaningful job to be able to um, be part of their, their life journey here. Yeah. Hey, 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 it's okay, it's okay. We actively engage the parents into the care of our new need. Uh, skin to skin contact, which we call kangaroo care here, tube feeding, changing of diaper, as well as touching, cuddling. We actively engage them into the care because sometimes parents get very scared to touch the baby actually because they are so small, they are so frail. So we educate them, we build the confidence in them. You really do need to love the work oh, and you have to love taking care of babies. I think we're all very dedicated to helping these babies do well, certainly so that they can go home to their parents. I started here um, probably 1997 and I've been here for quite a bit. We've gone through many changes just to improve our outcome of premature babies. So one of them is just simple hygiene, 
care. So uh, I just want to go back to the days when I started where our ward rounds are with a big team of junior doctors, senior doctors and we'd crowd around our babies talking over the baby. So in the past, we didn't even wear masks during those rounds so we could even potentially pass infections to them. If you notice in our ICU, we've got little boxes around our, our little infants and that's to remind us visually that, hey look, we must not violate and have like 10 people just crowding around baby. You should just limit the people going into that box. Simple measure like this, like even wearing our masks during our ward rounds and then our babies don't get nosocomial infections. The other one that I also want to say is family integrated care, very important. In the past, we treat baby as just one unit, you know, and then even the poor parents, when they come in to see their babies, they get quite um, sad and they don't even dare touch baby or some even get so put off they don't even want to come and visit. Evidence-based studies have shown that these babies need their family. So now we encourage them very much so to come visit their baby, touch, care, sing to their baby and when their baby is well enough even to do kangaroo care. <laughs> So in 1963, KKH was actually accredited by the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists as a training centre for specialists. So over the past 60 years, I think we have trained generations of specialists in obstetrics and gynecology to serve the healthcare need of Singapore. This is actually a walk-in clinic that's 24 hours open for our patients with urgent obstetric conditions that's less than 22 weeks, as well as gynecological conditions, for example, abdominal pain or pervaginal bleeding. We will offer all our help that we can give for the patient and reassure the patient while they are waiting for their treatment or results. If there's any abnormal conditions, we would offer them to lie down in the observation room when results are being informed. We do need to attend to them and provide extra care because some patients might be worried a little more. And in 1983, we welcomed the first IVF baby in Singapore. So even today, KK is the largest facilities okay, providing fertility care for couples with fertility issues. So this is the IVF laboratory and this is where the eggs and the sperm meet. The wife will undergo a procedure called a oocyte pickup. That's where the doctor will actually retrieve her eggs. On the other hand, the husband will actually come to the IVF centre to submit his uh, sperm ejaculate. From there, we will actually take the sperm, process them. Once they are ready, then we will put and introduce the sperm into the eggs via IVF, which is in vitro fertilisation. That is a natural fertilization whereby we just put the sperm and the egg together. We also do the um, ICSI, which is the intracytoplasmic sperm injection. That's the process where one sperm is injected into one egg. So once the process is uh, completed, we will actually culture them and look out for fertilization, followed by uh, embryo culture. In the past, we used to use a, a very big box of incubator to culture these embryos, compared to the latest generation of incubators that have an inbuilt camera that can actually capture the images 24-7. We choose the green for those who are going to transfer back to the patient mm -hmm. room. The beauty of this job is because we get to see a live formation. Yeah, and I think that is what intrigues uh, most of us and keeps us going. Do a quick check and then I'll scan baby and show you baby as well. This is the head, this is the eyes. There's a lot of passion involved. I think it's very rewarding to work in maternity care. So I actually see patients from the time they try and conceive all the way to um, telling them that they are pregnant and eventually delivering their babies. Hi, we're going to discharge the baby. The most meaningful part of the job is when we see our patients discharge well and healthy because when they come in postnatally, usually um, some of them develop co uh, complications like heavy bleeding uh, and they are, they are really fighting for their lives when they deliver and after that the amount of bleeding, the amount of pain, it's really uh, painful to see because I myself am, am a mother so we want them to discharge well and also able to independently take care of their baby at home. Yes. 
for it. Oh, you know? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye b